All right, today I've got a 21 inch Troy built push mower with the Honda 160 motor on it. I'm gonna go over everything that should be done for full service on a seasonal tune up. This holds true whether you're doing the service yourself or paying someone else to do the service on the mower for you. If you're paying someone else to do this, you may wanna ask for a list of everything that's gonna be included. Better yet, take a list with you detailing out everything you'd like to have done. Depending on where you live at, prices for a basic service can vary from 60 to 100 bucks for a push mower and 150 to 300 for a residential riding mower so if you're able to do this service for yourself you can obviously save a little bit of money if you do decide to perform this service yourself please read and follow and understand all safety warnings on the equipment and tools you're going to be using if you're not comfortable working with tools this may be something you'd be better off hiring somebody else to do for you either way it's good to know what to expect let's get started First things first, I don't like to bring anything into my shop before I drain all the fuel out of it. Pressure wash it, scrape the build up out from underneath the deck. As long as the mower isn't hot, it won't hurt anything to spray the entire mower down thoroughly and clean all the dirt and grime off of it and out from under it. Not all shops will include pressure washing as part of their standard service. It's quite honestly just a personal preference for me so I don't have to bring the dirt and grime into my shop. While I'm pressure washing and cleaning the mower off, I also check that there's no excessive rust on the deck. Make sure all bolts, pins, and anything that's in place that could be missing. Sure there's no bad kinks in the cables. Confirm the pull rope's in good shape. Wheels are in good shape. They're not wobbling. They're not wore out in the center. All right, next thing I'll do is pull the spark plug out and kind of get a feel for what the engine looks like. Spark plug will tell you a lot. Oh yeah. All right, looking at the spark plug condition, the spark plug can tell you a lot about the running condition of the motor. If the spark plug is white or chalky looking, the motor's running lean, too much air, not enough fuel. If the plug is black and sooty looking, running rich like this one, probably not enough air and too much fuel. Can be caused from a dirty air filter, choke stuck shut, you know, maybe the carburetor's flooding, putting too much fuel into it. A black plug can also be a sign that the motor is burning oil. If you see smoke when the motor is running, pay attention to the color of the smoke. Black or gray smoke can be a sign of too much fuel. White smoke can be a sign it's burning oil. That's a whole nother video down the road, though. I'm not going to get into details on that right now. All right, after you get that plug out, I leave it out until I pretty much get the rest of the mower done. Just makes it a little safer. Anyway, you can see in there how much dirt and grime is in there. Yeah, after you pull the plug out, remove the air filter, inspect it for excessive debris and dirt. The filter is relatively clean. A lot of times you can just blow it out with compressed air or a brush, you know, like a chip brush or something. If it needs to be replaced, generally it's an extra charge at most shops. I'll post a few links below in the comments for common filters for these things. I've already got one for this one. I mean, this one is pretty packed full of dirt and you can kind of spread it open there and see how dirty that is. You can kind of see down in that thing, you know, how much dirt is on this. But, you know, down in there, it doesn't have a part number on it, but I'll post it on the video when I edit the video so you can see what the part number is for the filter. Also, we'll wipe this out real good. Just get as much of that dirt and grime out of there. Now, when you put this thing back on, it's kind of hinged here on the bottom. This fits into two little spacers there and then folds up and latches in at the top when you put these in the metal side goes towards the mower the filter side the paper side that you can spread apart comes out should fit right in there and like i said just hinge this at the bottom just not worth taking the time to clean one up when they get that dirty and that could be why this thing was running so rich too the excess of fuel uh it actually it wouldn't be excess of fuel it would be lacking air so it causes the fuel mixture to be off because the air mixture, it's not getting the amount of air that it needs to mix that fuel. That can cause some surging. It can also cause the plug to foul. So putting a fresh air cleaner in there may take care of the surging problem without even having to work on the carburetor on this thing. I don't know if I said it earlier in the video, but the owner of this mower told me it had a slight surging problem when it was running. So, All right, next thing we're going to do here is change the oil. And unfortunately, a lot of these mowers no longer have a drain plug. You'll have to look at the one you've got. A lot of your Briggs, Kohler's, Kawasaki's, even some of the Hondas do have a drain plug in them. But in this case, you've got two options. Your best option, fluid extractors. It works for transmission fluid oil, pretty much any kind of liquid. You basically have to pull the dipstick out of the mower and then just tip the mower over, put your tray down here tip it over and just drain it out. Now what I'm gonna do on this, and I, I'll put some links below to this kind of stuff because these come in really handy. 
And this is a rather large one. They come a lot smaller. But all you do is stick that down in there and it creates a vacuum. And it literally just sucks the oil out of the motor. Now everybody says you can't get all of it out this way, but I'll tell you what, I've done this to ones that have a drain plug on just to see how much was left after I sucked the oil out of them. And I'll tell you what, it was less than a quarter ounce. I will also tell you that this is better to do this with the motor slightly warm. Unfortunately, it's been sitting here long enough that it's cooled off. But the warmer this is, the better it is, the easier it is to extract that fluid out. Now, one question everybody always asks is what kind of oil do you use? You know, I don't personally recommend one brand over another. Of course, we all have our favorites, but you know, whether it's any better or any worse, I have no idea. One thing I will say is most of these small motors recommend a 30 weight, just a 30 SAE weight oil. If you live in a colder climate, which I can't imagine why you'd be cutting the grass if it was 40 degrees out, but you know, if you are, 10W30 would be a better choice. It's a little bit thinner, works better in the colder climates. Pretty much that's it. Suck the oil out of it, put the fresh oil in it. Then we're gonna raise it back up and check the blade. All right, this is a Honda 160 engine. And believe it or not, it takes only 16 ounces of oil. I measured out in an old measuring cup. But try to get this as precise as you can. You don't want to add too much. Um, you obviously don't want to add too little, but people don't realize if too much oil can actually be worse than not enough oil. What I'm trying to say here is if you put too much oil in here, the oil actually gets up and interferes with the travel of the piston and can cause it to actually, with enough oil in it, push the piston off. I mean, if you overfill it with a couple ounces, it's not gonna hurt it. But if you put a quart or two quarts over in here, this engine will lock up uh, and you can do serious engine damage. But guys, that's pretty much how easy it is to change the oil. Like I said, I'll put some links down below for a, one of the vacuum extractors. After you've checked to make sure your spark plug is disconnected, you can go ahead and pull this blade off. Now, one reason I'm stressing that spark plug so much is if you spin this blade, it's effectively spinning the mower. Now, there are some safeties on it with the switches on the handles that prevent it from firing, but it's just not worth taking a chance. You know if the spark plug's out, you have no chance of this thing firing. It also makes it easier to turn if you're trying to get this blade into a certain position. But I, I just make sure you at least take the spark plug wire off anytime you're going to be working under a mower where you got your hands around the blades. I would also put a glove on so you can wrap your hand around the blade and hold it. This particular mower takes a 16 millimeter to get this bolt out. It is normally, actually it's always that I can remember, a normal right hand thread. So you're going to lefty loosey righty tighty. So we're going to turn this to the left to get it out. Drop that down. Now I always take this, put it right back up in there just so I don't lose it or get it mixed up with another mower. Can't tell you how many times I've laid parts down around the shop and I know I just had them, but they're nowhere to be found. I'm sure that never happens to you, right? You can see that blade there. You know, it's got a few minor nicks and dings. This corner right here is really key. That corner edge does 80 to 90% of your cutting. So if that corner edge is rounded off, you know, you'll see these, especially if you're in a sandy area where there's a lot of sand. This area right here, this corner will actually get rounded off. And once that gets rounded off, it's time to replace this blade. But this one is definitely repairable. I'll show you how to sharpen it with a file or a Dremel tool if you have one. File works fine. When we put this back on too, I'll show you how to make sure that this goes on the right direction. All right, once we got this blade off, what I like to do is clamp it down in a vise. Put it so the edge is facing you. Use just a standard file and just kind of file. Now, if you're gonna use the file or if that's all you have, just go in one direction. And this is key. You wanna make sure that your file follows the contour of that cut. So where the factory cut was, you know, make sure you're following that, put a little pressure on that and just follow the contour of that cut. You don't wanna make it a, a steeper angle and you don't wanna make it less of an angle. Come all the way out to the edge, one long stroke. You'll start to see that as you're filing. You'll see that it's, uh, start to blend together. Now if you're going to use a Dremel tool you want to keep a quick constant motion. Don't just stick it in one spot and just sit there. You want to constantly be moving back and forth and keeping that sharp. Again I'd put some earplugs in if you're going to do this. It gets kind of loud. Once you get done with one side just flip it around, clamp it back in. 
a Dremel tool, you can get a very precise edge on it. If you've got one small spot that has a bigger nick in it than another spot, you can obviously take that Dremel tool and really get that clean. I've used grinders in the past too, but I really don't recommend them. They're probably a little bit faster, but I'd rather put a nice, good, clean edge on there. Take my time. If you have a grinder, I mean, it will work, but I guarantee you're not gonna get as good edge on there as what I can get with a file and a Dremel tool. All right, now like I said, I told you I'd tell you how to tell which way to put this blade back on. This is your grass deflector. That should blow the grass up. So it either blows it up into a bag or it mulches it. This is actually a mulcher. So when you put this on, your cutting edge should be the lowest part of the blade and then you've got this deflector that blows this up this way. So you always wanna make sure that when you're looking up under the mower, so if you're looking under here, your cutting edge is the lowest part of the blade and then this scoop will blow the grass up underneath the mower. And that's the way you wanna look at that. Now the torque spec on this bolt for this Honda mower, uh, 160, 160 cc's, is 38 foot-pounds. Don't wanna over tighten them either because you can actually twist this bolt off. So if you're not familiar, um, I've done this many, many times and I'd like to say I'd get it to exactly 38 foot-pounds. I probably won't, but it'll be close. You know, make sure everything's lined up, get it to where it's snug, and then you uh, should probably get a torque wrench. You can actually rent them at a loaner tool program at AutoZone or someplace like that. You don't have to buy this if it's not something you're gonna be doing all the time. But I would definitely recommend you get a torque wrench uh, and get this tight enough, but not too tight. Click, there you go, exactly 38 pounds. That's pretty much everything involved with uh, full service on the mower. Once I get it back down here, we'll get the spark plug in it. We'll make sure everything's working good. I've got a video coming up right after this one where I'm gonna be working on a John Deere riding mower that has a no start situation cranks, but uh, won't start. Pretty sure I know what it is, but if you wanna subscribe to my channel, Stick around here in a few weeks. I should have another video coming. All right, we got that blade back on now. I got a new plug here. Let's show you guys a little trick here. Uh, spark plug gap on this is 0.7 to 0.8 millimeters. That's about 28 to 31 thousandths. Depending on what kind of gauge you got. Normally your spark plug's set pretty close to what it should be when you get it. If you don't have one of these, I mean, you can pick these up about anywhere, but a standard business card, take it, Fold it in half, that's about 15 thousandths thickness. Fold it in half, it's about 30. So if you take a standard business card, it should fit loosely in there. I mean, it'll fall out, shouldn't be tight. That's a 30 thousandths gap on that plug right there. That's a real easy way. Also a piece of you know card stock or anything, they're all about the same thickness. They may not be exact, but they'll get you close enough to where, you, where it'll work. Um, that way, if you don't have a set of feeler gauges or some way to gap these plugs, you know, it looks too tight, looks too wide, use a business card. You can pull it out of your pocket, check it right on the spot. This is usually the last thing I do when I get done working on these things is put a, put a new plug back in them. I do include the plug with the service when I do it. Um, you've got a new plug, you got to collapse that washer, so you're going to torque that down a little bit. I don't know the exact specs, but just keep in mind it is aluminum. You don't want to over tighten it. Make sure your plug gets all the way on there. You'll feel like an audible click when it gets on there. I like to check the oil just to make sure. You know, probably not going to show up on camera since it's fresh oil, but it's right on the spot. Another thing I do is I always use 93 octane fuel in these small engines, preferably alcohol free or ethanol free. You can buy it by a quart or gallon at most hardware stores. If you're fortunate enough to live near an airport or a racetrack that'll sell it to you, you know, you have to certify you're using it for off-road and all that stuff, which you are with a lawnmower. I would run ethanol free in these things. I'm also not a big fan of fuel treatments. I would rather just drain the fuel out of a lawnmower or a riding lawnmower, a tiller, or whatever you've got instead of putting fuel treatments in it. I have stored engines for 10 years, literally 10 years or more. No fuel in them. You dump fuel in them, you start them right back up. They fire up like they did. You just shut them down yesterday. So anyway, nothing against fuel treatments. I mean, they obviously work. Um, people use them all the time. But why would I go spend five, 10, $15 on fuel treatment when I've got literally 80 cents worth of fuel in this tank that I can either run out at the end of the season when I'm done with the mower, or I can just drain it out and replace it next summer. It's not worth using fuel treatments on these things. So 
that's my spiel for today. You know, take it for what it is. Just not a big fan of them. I think that pretty well wraps it up for a seasonal mower maintenance video. Um, the only other thing that I could think that I would have possibly done would be to check the valves mower that you know has some hours on it. If you're taking this somewhere to get it serviced, you might want to mention to them to check them. Probably something I'll make another video on down the road. It's not something I included in this video. For one thing, this video is probably going to end up being 15, 20 minutes long, and I had envisioned five or 10 when I started it. There's just a lot to go over when you take the time to explain it. I will put some links down below if you purchase anything from them it does help this channel and i i really appreciate it i also welcome your comments so if you got comments good or bad whatever they are i try to respond to as many of them as i can and like i said earlier if you haven't already subscribed please consider doing so i've got a lot of projects coming up you probably saw sitting on the trailer out there when i started up this little troy built mower i've got a john deere that has a no start issue cranks but won't start i'll be pulling that in the garage probably tomorrow and working on it I'll try to get a video out for that within the next two weeks, and I'm going to try to get a video out every two to three weeks. Stick around, subscribe, comment, appreciate it. Thanks for watching, guys. Till next time.